welcome to everyone who signed on to our final webinar of 2019. This is Karen Anderson, Director of Supporting Success for Children with Hearing Loss, and I'm very happy to be hosting this webinar to introduce you to Streamer, an automated speech to text captioning app that does so much and can do so much as an accommodation for our students with hearing loss. So again, thank you for joining us. I want to jump in here. There we go. And just set up uh, set up our thinking so that we're ready to really understand why captioning can be such an important accommodation for children who are hard of hearing. Most students with hearing loss are hard of hearing and not deaf, and they are now being fully included in the general education settings. Unfortunately, hearing devices do not restore normal hearing. Even the most expensive hearing aids and the absolute best and latest FM or DM hearing assistance technology just does not restore hearing to a normal level the way that we would expect glasses to restore normal vision levels for people who have a visual impairment. There's no such thing as a hearing device that restores 2020 hearing. And that means that students must always be working harder to try and fully understand what's being said. And this extra energy that's spent to listen leaves them with fewer cognitive resources to really understand and remember what's said. And as we think about students progressing from year to year in school, we really expect them to understand more vocabulary at a faster rate from year to year to year. And this is especially difficult for students who are hard of hearing because they often do not hear the complete word in some cases and the new vocabulary can sound an awful lot like other similar words. So confusions with vocabulary and vocabulary learning is an issue for students with hearing loss. It really is hard for kids who are hard of hearing to keep up the same pace as their class peers. And because of this challenge and this listening gap, many students who are hard of hearing have increasing gaps in their academic performance from year to year to year. I always like to use this simulation um, that you're going to see next. What it is, is it simulates having a 25 decibel hearing loss, which doesn't sound like much. Typical hearing for adults is zero decibels to 20 decibels. Typical hearing for kids, especially kids that are uh, under the age of adolescence is minus 10 to plus 15 decibels. So again, 25 decibels doesn't sound like very much of a hearing loss. And in fact, our hearing aids often are fit so that kids hear at about this level. Because again, they're not restoring hearing to normal hearing levels. So I'm gonna show you what uh, simple children's story is and it has been changed to reflect the challenges in listening to word endings and in missing those unemphasized words during speech. I'm going to give you a chance to look at this and see if you can figure out what the story is so far. Once upon a time a city mouse went to visit a country mouse. The country mouse lived in a field. He was glad to see his city friend. The two mice ran about the field and played until noon. So again, this is just a, a little simulation of what it's like to be hard of hearing in a classroom. And yes, you can hear, but hearing all the parts of all the words is often a challenge. So the Americans with Disabilities Act specifies that schools must ensure that communication of students with hearing loss is as effective as it is for peers, thereby affording them an equal opportunity 
to reach the same level of achievement as that provided to others. Our Supporting Success website has a whole page that uh, dives into this ADA policy as it applies to students with hearing loss. One of the things to really understand is that if effective communication is not there for these students, if they don't have an equally effective communication in that school setting, then we must provide auxiliary aids and services in order to close that gap. So when we think about potential accommodations, we can see sign language interpreters for those children who are deaf or visual learners. Those FM or DM devices, the hearing assistance technology is a very common accommodation. Captioning is also an, a, an accommodation for persons with hearing loss that is specified by ADA. And these are just some of the accommodations. It certainly isn't an all-inclusive list. The point is we need to identify those students who are not receiving that full access to verbal communication in the classroom. And in general, students who are hard of hearing are not, and they cannot, even with our best hearing technology. And then we need to figure out, okay, what do we need to do to close that gap? And for students who have decent language, who are motivated learners, who are in the regular ed setting, we can think about captioning once they be begin to approach that secondary school grade, so fifth grade and above. We certainly want them to have um, reading ability in terms of reading fluency that is at least 100 to 125 words a minute because that's the typical speaking rate of a teacher. And so if we want them to really be able to uh, read the captions as they come across, then they need to have at least that kind of a reading uh, fluency rate. So Streamer can be used as a classroom accommodation, and there's two ways we can think of it. The first one is a primary accommodation, and this is where the students really don't have enough uh, auditory perception to capture the speech sounds to really be relying on what they're hearing for understanding. And this would be then a primary accommodation where they would be looking at the caption transcript as their, their main means of understanding what's going on in that classroom. Streamer captioning is not used for the most part as a primary accommodation. It's mainly used by students who are hard of hearing. They're using their hearing in order to learn. That's their primary avenue. And they're focusing on the speaker's face. They're, they're working to listen. And then when they miss a word or a phrase, they get a little bit behind in their understanding. That's when they pop down their eyes and look at the caption transcript and they go, oh, okay, now I get it. And then they can pop their eyes right back up again. And this really is who most of our students with hearing loss are in the population of kids who are deaf and hard of hearing in the schools. They're mainly hard of hearing students who are missing bits and pieces of words. So we're excited about Streamer as a secondary accommodation for these students because it really has improved as all of our technology has improved and the accuracy is pretty phenomenal. It's at about 98% or higher for most speakers. And uh, we're really excited to show more about it. Streamer can also facilitate student transition. Unfortunately, half of people who are deaf or hard of hearing are not employed or they're underemployed. And we know that the more successful they are in high school, and the, the more they have an opportunity to be successful in higher education, the better they're going to be able to perform as a worker in a post-school employment setting. So when we have students who are on IEPs, 
they must have transition plans and those transition plans include preparing them for post-secondary employment for, excuse me for post-secondary programs or employment and as part of that we need to increase the students understanding of which accommodations they require to function under what kind of settings and then provide examples to them so that they can experience different accommodations and a difference in their own communication or comprehension and of course how to request these accommodations so a trial with speaker with excuse me a trial with streamer can further a student's transition goals and better yet this trial with streamer can be a hundred percent free so today's webinar is to answer your questions. It's to allow you to see Streamer at work and hear from Rob Palmquist, who's coming up next, how Streamer was developed and some of the really cool bells and whistles above and beyond captioning that are already built into the Streamer app. So I am very pleased that Supporting Success for Children with Hearing Loss is partnering with Robert Palmquist of Auditory Sciences to bring Streamer to you, the folks in education, the educators and the parents who are really concerned and want to make sure that our students with hearing loss do have effective communication in the classroom. So Rob, I'm going to turn it over to you so you can lead us through all the cool things that Streamer can do for our kids. Well, thanks, Karen. Let me turn on my microphone. And so, yeah, thanks for that uh, introduction and thanks everyone for joining us. Um, certainly glad to uh, uh, show you some of the various capabilities that we've built into Streamer here. Uh, thanks to your feedback. Uh, we're partners here working together to uh, ensure that students have equal access to uh, all the communications inside and outside of the classrooms. And so we definitely appreciate your feedback and your suggestions as we continue to develop the software. So what you've been looking at in the bottom there, that captioning window, is definitely uh, the software that's uh, generating the captioning for you. So there is no person in the background typing here or something like this. This is all automated software that's generating the captioning in real time. So let me give you a quick tour. Um, right now you're looking at the captioning window and I want to jump out here for a minute to the lobby. Um, so unfortunately that's going to turn off the captioning for a second. But I want you as educators to think of Streamer as a website that your school is going to own. And let me change the font size here a little bit. And on your website, what you will have then is a, uh, a streamer website for your school. And in your lobby, we call it, what you will see is the various streamer rooms that you have. So in your school setup, what you would have is each of these rooms assigned to a particular student. So instead of saying Bridgeport here, it would be something like uh, Chris Smith. And so that would be the room that Chris would use throughout the course of the day and the evening to caption any sort of conversations. Let me jump back into the room here again. So again, think of this in terms of a website that is developed specifically for your school that you're going to use to support all the students and staff members and potentially parents um, that are involved in that school. And so we can provide captioning, we can provide live language translation. So if, for example, you're in an IEP meeting and that parent only speaks Vietnamese or Russian or Spanish or whatever it might be, anything you say in your language, in this case English, is going to be presented to them, meaning captioned and spoken out loud in their language, and they'll respond in their native language and you'll be seeing and hearing that in English. Let me increase this font size here again because I think that's a little hard for you to see. And so yes, one of the features here is the ability to obviously change the font size to whatever you prefer. Some other sort of uh, quick things we can do here, for example, if I want to uh, change the uh, uh, color of the display, I can do that. So if you have a student that would prefer, in this case, to have yellow text on a dark, uh, very dark blue background, certainly we can do that. I think I kind of like the bright one, so I'm going to change it back. There we go. So now we're back to the default setting. The point being that the student can 
customize the display to their particular preference. So if they want a larger font size or a smaller font size, uh, change the color screen, things like that, there's lots of different parameters here that are going to be optimized for the student. And those are all, of course, saved in that student's preference setting. So when they really they log in, they'll be able to uh, automatically load those particular preferences. I'm going to turn on the uh, side panel here. Um, there we go. And uh, scroll down here a little bit. Um, what I have here is some various phrases. So in addition to the captioning and the language translation side, we got some requests to add the ability to insert notes into the transcript, to have a student be able to use this as a note-taking system. And so we did that. So certainly a very nice uh, sub uh, suggestion. So for example, if uh, the student uh, uh, wants to insert a note here, I just double click and that note is automatically inserted into the transcript. And so as the teacher is speaking, perhaps uh, they didn't quite understand something. And so the student can just double click on this. And when they do that, again, that note is inserted directly into the transcript at whatever location the uh, live uh, or the uh, conversation occurs in. So later in the day, when they are at the end of the class period, when the student saves the transcript, they'll have those notes as part of the transcript themselves. So again, a very nice way to be able to insert notes and to do note taking during the actual class period itself. Um, other things that you can do with this, uh, for example, if you are a uh, teacher in the uh, classroom and uh, you want to send a note to a uh, particular student, you can do that. So in this case, I'll send a note to uh, John Render, I guess, you can do that. Um, and I could say something like, um, do you have a question? When I do that, that note is going to appear on John's computer screen. John does not have to be logged into Streamer at the time. So it can just be a pop-up that's going to appear on his screen and it's going to ask him that question. Or maybe you're a DHH teacher that's going to pull some uh, student out of the class period and you want to remind them that, hey, the meeting's coming up in 30 minutes. And so you could just send them a little note. And that, again, is going to pop up on the screen. And if you want, it can also have a nice little tone that comes with that. So it's just a way of reaching out to those students. And again, the messaging is built into this capability. So very simple to use. Um, let me uh, change the fonts or the screen size here a little bit. And I if I can get over here. here we go. Drag this up here. Show you one other little sort of a nice feature, actually pretty significant feature. Um, but another one I can do is I can drag files into the transcript window and send them to a student. So in this case, now that's sent and your student is going to have that document. So let me get back to a full screen here. So again, we've showed you the ability to be able to caption uh, conversations, to be able to add notes to those conversations, uh, to customize the display, changing font size and uh, colors and such, uh, the ability to share documents. And I guess next I'll show you how to save the uh, transcript. So you, with your admin account, definitely control this ability. So if you do not want the students to have the ability to save the transcript, you can turn that feature off. By default, it is turned on, but certainly you can turn that off. You have complete control over all aspects of your school streamer website, including the ability for students to download or save transcripts. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and uh, download this transcript. When I do that, it's going to ask me the time frame. So I'll do it in the last hour. In this case, I guess I'll save it as a Word document. And up here, you can see this include a summary option. And uh, so I'll just do a short one here. What that is going to do is take the entire contents of the transcript, let's say it's an hour long lecture, and when I save that, I'll save it to my desktop here, I think. When I save that, it's automatically going to insert a summary of the lecture at the top of the transcript. So again, if it's an hour long lecture, maybe on George Washington or something like that, um, what you can have at the very top of that transcript then is that condensed summary of what that's all about. This is probably pretty hard for you to see. Um, let me change the zoom in on it a bit. There we go. All right. 
And so hopefully you can see that a little bit. But here you can see the quick summary that was automatically produced of this particular transcript. And here then is the actual transcript uh, with the name of the person who is speaking. Um, and if I scroll down here quite a ways, you can see the notes that I inserted here. So in this case, it's uh, color coded, uh, just like I saved it in the actual uh, 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 transcript itself. All right, let me close out of that, get back into Streamer. Okay, so we've gone over a lot of different capabilities in terms of the uh, system itself. And let's go back to the PowerPoint slides and just review a few things. And I guess before I do that, I'm gonna launch one other feature here. There we go. And so what I've just done is launched an overlay tool. And what that does is it presents the captioning on top of another uh, particular application. So in this case, I'm doing it on top of the PowerPoint slides. And so if, for example, you're showing a uh, video um, or something like this, you can have the captioning be overlaid on top of that video or maybe a Skype call or something like this. So again, you don't have to be viewing the captioning within uh, the streamer website itself. You can view it in this overlay window. I'm going to close that out. I just wanted to show you that that exists. All right, if I can find my mouse, I will do that. There it is. All right, and we'll go back to the caption itself and get back to the slides. Okay, there we go. All right. So, um, you know, Karen sent out this little uh, uh, kind of uh, comic little sketch here, and I sort of like that. Um, hopefully you can read the font there. Uh, the first one says, did you pick up your tree? The next one, yeah, I hurt my knee, and so forth. And so if you know someone that is hard of hearing, perhaps yourself, um, certainly uh, we can help you with your holiday shopping here. So a gift of a anytime, anywhere captioning system is kind of a nice thing to have for the holidays. Um, and so we're going to show you how to do that in this particular webinar. It takes less than a minute to do that. And so if you stick around, we're going to show you how to do that and it's completely free. And so perhaps you have elderly parents or something along those lines that are you're going to be visiting with over the holidays. And certainly using a streamer uh, a website to caption uh, the conversations that you're having at those family gatherings is awesome. And again, completely free, takes less than a minute to do that. And so what better holiday gift is there than uh, something very meaningful uh, to the individuals that otherwise would not be able to fully participate in those conversations. And like I said, it's free and it takes less than a minute. So it really makes, in this case, holiday shopping a little bit easier. And I'll show you how to do that in a few slides here. Um, a quick review of what uh, we've talked about here. Again, think of Streamer as a website that your school owns. So not just an app that you download or install or something like that. This is a website and because it's a website, there's lots of different uh, capabilities that are enabled that would not be part of a uh, standard or traditional app. Again, students will use your school's website to caption, translate, and take notes. Because it's a website, there is no installation required. In previous iterations of our software, uh, people were downloading uh, an installation, uh, having to go to somebody in your computer department to uh, get permissions to install that or to have them install it. Um, and any sort of updates, you had to go take the platform, the computer away from the student and do the upgrade. All that is completely gone. You no longer need to do any of that. It's just a website that you go to. And so there is no installation. Because it's a website, again, it pretty much runs on any device that uses a browser to connect to the internet. So if you have iPads or Android phones or laptops, um, if you want a low cost system, go ahead and buy an Amazon Kindle or an Amazon Fire. Um, they're currently on sale for I think about $29 or something like that. Um, that platform is going to run Streamer absolutely fine. We do not care at all about the CPU or the amount of RAM or anything like that or the operating system, anything like that that you have in that device. Uh, we happily run on very low-end devices, no issues whatsoever. It is complete contextual-based conversations. And so uh, as you've been seeing this, you've probably seen the words automatically update. And we go way beyond the capabilities of something like uh, Microsoft Translate or Google Live Caption. Um, with our software, we're doing both forward and reverse contextual based. So as a word is spoken, it's looking at the previous words. 
and using that context to generate the appropriate spelling of that word. And then as new words are being spoken, we're looking at previous words and also updating those previous words. So this is full directional contextual based upgrading uh, that ends up being fully punctuated when you're looking at the uh, transcript itself. So a lot going on here in order to make this system extremely accurate. We do also support multiple simultaneous speakers. So there's no limits in terms of the number of people that can be participating in a conversation at any given time. Which is really cool. That means that another teacher or somebody could just break in and it would also be showing up on the transcript. And you can see that the name is shown here on the left side and I can scroll over the person and see an image of that person. And so yes, Karen, thanks for doing that. And so if you're in a team teaching situation or if you're a family sitting around a table eating a holiday meal, whatever anybody says at any time is going to be captioned and displayed to that person. And again, with the, uh, the name shown as well. So kind of neat, um, actually really neat to do all that capabilities. Um, note taking, we talked briefly about that. The students can insert notes directly into their copy of the transcript. So when a student inserts a note, they're the only ones that are going to see that note. And so if, for example, you have 10 people that are viewing the captioning of the conversation, only the person that inserts the notes are going to see their notes, um, not all other nine uh, participants. Color-coded categories, and so the student's going to be able to create their own categories and just double-click and they're inserted into the lecture. Also, I showed you the automated summary of the lecture. So some really nice features here for note-taking. Talk real quick about language translation. Um, this is simultaneous multilingual translation. A lot of folks, when they think of language translation, they think of just bi-directional capabilities. Uh, for example, English and Spanish or something like this. If you are an ELL teacher and you have a classroom full of students where those students may speak 20 different languages, whatever you're saying in English is going to be presented to each of those students in their preferred language, Vietnamese, Russian, Spanish, uh, Korean, whatever it might be. And when they respond in their native language, that's going to be translated into every other person's language. So in this case, we would have perhaps Korean going into Vietnamese, Korean into Spanish, Korean into English. And so this is complete United Nations type language translation. With a single room, you're going to be able to support all the students in that classroom and potentially parents uh, that would prefer to speak a language other than English. And this can be both captioned and spoken output. So obviously, if you're in a classroom where you have 20 different languages being spoken out loud, you'd want the students to wear an earbud or something like that. But definitely, you can use this system to simultaneously translate whatever you're saying into Right now, we're up to about 117 languages that we support. And so uh, uh, lots of capabilities in terms of languages. Just one slide here on speech generation. But if you have a student who is nonverbal, we have built in a capability called Phrase Builder. So certainly, you could type and write entire sentences, but that takes a long time. So if a student is typing out a sentence that's going to be spoken out loud, by the time they finish typing, the teacher's kind of moved on already. And so we have this capability called Phrase Builder that makes it very easy for a student to quickly say, state whatever they want to ask in the question. Um, and so very simple to use. Um, I won't go into a, a lot of times demonstrating it here, but definitely if you have a student that is nonverbal, contact us. We're happy to show you how this works. And again, Phrase Builder, very powerful, very flexible, and it allows the student to say precisely what they want to say at any given moment. Also, one thing that uh, was a, you know, a direct feedback from educators is that they wanted the ability for the speech generation to be played on a remote device. Meaning if I'm talking, if I'm communicating with you I, and, and I'm nonverbal, I would enter a phrase and then I want it to be able to be spoken out loud on your device. Kind of sounds complicated, but in real life, it really works great because now instead of this large amplified speaker that needs to broadcast everywhere, you can have a, your own contained speaker on your body and it really works nice. I did a poor job explaining that, um, but it's a really nice feature for speech generation. So lots going on there. I do want to slow down a little bit and talk about 
privacy and security because this is very important. Uh, it's becoming more important each day. And so certainly there are a lot of federal laws that I'm sure you're aware of now, state and federal, um, that involve student privacy issues. And so when we started developing Streamer, this was done in partnership with the US military, specifically the Marine Corps. And so the original uh, version of the software was developed with the Office of Naval Research for the US Marine Corps to use in theater operations, meaning in the battlefield. And so certainly security and privacy is not an afterthought for what we're doing here. This was designed into the system from day zero. Um, and so it is very much compliant with uh, all laws in terms of privacy and security. Very different than something, for example, uh, Microsoft or Google or Amazon or anything like that, where in their, uh, when you agree to use those services, you are giving them a perpetual license to retain, save, record, and share all that data with anyone at any time. And so certainly, um, you know, the, the classic experiment that people do is they'll turn on one of those uh, services and talk about something that they've never talked about before in their life. Maybe you, you, you know, read a script from a uh, fishing magazine if you're not into fishing. And if you do that using uh, Microsoft or Google, what you're going to find is the next day in your Facebook feed or whatever it might be, you'll all of a sudden start seeing all these ads for fishing gear. Um, the way Microsoft and Google are making money off of their free products is that they're taking the data that you're providing them and they sell that to uh, third party advertisers and such. And so definitely there's no ambiguity here when you read the terms and agreements of Microsoft and Google and Amazon and such um, that that's what they're doing. And that's how they make money off of doing that capabilities. So definitely with Streamer, you have a secure and private system where everything is fully encrypted in all directions and you alone control all access to all your data. We never ever save or retain any sort of voice recordings. They simply don't exist. There are no voice recordings that we have anywhere at any time. And your data, when you clear it from your transcript, it is gone forever. There's no backups. Nobody has shared that information with anybody else. Um, you alone control all that information. Um, just a quick award. We're kind of proud of it. So uh, this is uh, certainly a significant award to be uh, named as the best education technology product of the year. So that's kind of cool. So we sort of like that. Again, uh, typical website setup. Think of this in terms of creating a website for your uh, school or, or district. Typically, it tends to be you're going to create a streamer website for your school. I'm going to show you how to do that in a minute here. Um, all the rooms are shown in your school's lobby. You're going to potentially have one room reserved for morning announcements and events. And so if you're in a situation where a, a student really wants to hear those morning announcements, to be able to see a captioning of them, you can have a room that does that. Um, there was a situation here, uh, um, boy, about, uh, I guess last year, where a student who moved into the district who was very hard of hearing wanted to play on the baseball team and he missed the morning announcements where they were talking about tryouts. Um, and so that ended up going to court. Um, but certainly giving equal access to students that are hard of hearing or deaf to uh, morning announcements and events such as an all school assembly or something like that or perhaps uh, um, announcements uh, during a football game. Um, any sort of event like that, you can use Streamer to uh, support that. Um, certainly uh, for language translation situations, for example, if you potentially have a situation where a parent could come into the front desk and uh, want to take their student out, maybe just to visit the dentist, but that parent can only speak Russian. And at that time, you don't have somebody in the office that uh, uh, understands Russian. You can use Streamer to be able to communicate with that parent. Very simple to do. Um, each additional room in your school's website will be assigned to a specific student. This is how it's done. Um, I, I see that we have people mostly from the US, Canada, and Australia, uh, and almost exclusively that's how it's done um, in those countries where you assign each room to a specific student and that student then is going to use that room throughout the day to caption all their classroom instructions. 
Um, the different approach is done in the Middle East and Africa, where they tend to equip each room with their own, uh, each physical classroom with their own streamer room. There, the philosophy is that if anybody has access to an accommodation, then all students should have equal access to that accommodation. So kind of a, a different way of doing it. Um, but either approach is great. Um, but again, within the countries that I mentioned here, Australia, Canada, and the United States, um, certainly it's far more common to assign a room to a specific student as part of their IEP. And they're going to use that single streamer room to support all their classroom instruction that occurs throughout the day. You, as uh, an admin, can monitor the usage of all those rooms. You can see when they're being used, if they're not being used. Um, we have lots of nice tools that allow you to communicate with all your students. So for example, you could send out a broadcast message that's gonna go to every student um, that has access to your school's website. Um, some really nice features that make it very easy to set all the parameters, uh, access, usage, security parameters, and to be able to communicate with all those students to see if they have any questions or uh, just a friendly uh, note of encouragement, whatever it might be, you can do that through your website. And again, this is a website, so you can do this from any location at any time on any platform. This is not installed onto a specific desktop that you can only access it through that desktop. You can access it anywhere at any time. Okay, so I promised I'd uh, step you through how to create a school's website. And definitely I want to encourage you to set up your own personal website. So the slide here says school, but you can certainly ignore that and say create your uh, family website. If you're in the holiday uh, mode here and you want to create a personal website for your family to use during the holidays, absolutely we can do that. So instead of creating your school's website, we're going to create your family website. And you can use that private and secure website for your family gatherings. It's completely free. And as I say here, it takes less than a minute. So here is the URL that you will go to, and you can do that right now as I'm talking. This, again, literally takes less than a minute to do this. We are going to send you a copy of these slides after this presentation, and so you'll be able to also use those slides to get that URL. But if you uh, go ahead and open up a browser window and go to that address, um, then you're going to fill in the form, and there's just five questions there. And so the first one is your email address. And so we need that to send you information on how to use your system. So we're gonna send you uh, several emails, um, get you started with just simple captioning. And I think we send you, Chris sends you like six or seven of these. Uh, by the seventh one, he's really getting into advanced features like how to use the broadcast mess uh, feature, how to uh, set topics, uh, things like that that are pretty advanced, but certainly, uh, um, just go ahead and type your email and to enter your name so that we can uh, greet you appropriately. And then enter the name of the streamer account. So if you're doing it for a school, you would do school-admin. If you're doing it for your family, you would just use your family name-admin. So in this case, I guess it's Carol Adams. So for the streamer account, we recommend you would use Adams-admin. And that's your family website that you're going to use for captioning and translating, potentially translating all your holiday gatherings or whatever it might be. Again, completely free here, very easy to do. Uh, the first streamer room, if you're setting this up for your family, you would just do Adams-01. Um, if this was a school website you're setting up, you would name it after the school, and that's going to give you your first streamer room. Um, in your family's case, you may not add additional rooms, but in your school, you will. Um, so each particular student that is going to be supported is going to have their own separate room. And so that's why we start out with Dash 01. Okay, so then just click the button and you're done. And so again, you're strongly encouraged to create your own personal streamer website, play with it, have fun with it, um, encourage parents. So for example, perhaps you have a parent um, at your school and the parent's not quite sure what streamer is all about, have them try it. Um, just go to the website here, fill in the form and they can try it at home uh, with their child, with their children or with their elderly parents, whatever it might be. And it's completely free. You're not entering a credit card. You're not gonna be charged here or something like that. Um, it's just very simple to do. So hopefully you're able to set that up. And again, we're gonna send you these slides afterwards so you'll be able to do that on your own.
And Rob, am I right? The the trials we're talking about that are free, they're they're we're giving them a full 30 days for this trial, so they can really use it through the holidays and in different situations, and um, in the car, in the around the table at a restaurant, all of that for 30 days to get a feel for how to use it themselves before they ever um, even want to try and set one up for the school. They, or there's plenty of time to try. Yes, yep, completely free and it's gonna last 30 days. And again, you're not entering a credit card. I, I know a lot of times when you sign up for a quote free trial, um, you have to cancel within 30 days or you're gonna get charged or something like that. Uh, we don't do that. Um, Cause again, we don't even have your credit card information. And so again, just play with it. Um, and uh, it, is, it is a really nice, um, what should I say, enhancement uh, to your holiday gatherings, especially if you have elderly parents uh, that uh, really, they don't verbalize that they're not part of the conversation, but you can kind of see it. And once you get captioning set up, they can really participate and be more part of the family, more included in those family gatherings. So it's nice and it's free. So <laughs> there you go. Um, the typical classroom setup, we do get asked questions about uh, how it is set up in the classroom. And so typically, um, again, within the countries that I mentioned, uh, Canada, United States and Australia, um, what you have is a teacher wearing a wireless microphone and the students that are going to be viewing the captioning, and I use plural there because it certainly is not limited to just one student. If you have multiple students in that class that would like to view the captioning, they're gonna do that with any sort of device that can connect to the internet. And so a laptop, an iPad, or a Chromebook. These days it seems to be Chromebooks that are the most popular, but whatever device you have um, is gonna work fine. And again, if budget is a uh, crunch for you and you're having trouble getting dollars for this, go and buy an Amazon Fire. Um, yeah, they're only like $29, $39. They have these great sales this time of year. And so a very nice portable device that's gonna work great for a captioning streamer. Um, so again, the requirements are that you set up a streamer website. And so in this case, we're talking about schools. So set up one for your school, but uh, for you at home, this could be your own personal one. Any device that can connect to the internet using a Chrome browser. And in a classroom, you're gonna want a wireless microphone. For streamer, we don't care if it's cabled or not. Um, so certainly um, at home around the gatherings, you can buy a $10 lapel microphone from Amazon. I think that's what Karen uses actually. And so a very low end, very affordable uh, lapel mic that just plugs into your smartphone and you're set for 10 bucks. Yeah, I, I was surprised at really how well it it works. I just plugged it into my phone, called up the streamer website, and then um, I was talking, and then the person who I was talking to across the table called up the streamer website. They were able to look at all the captions. So if you're talking about having a, a table full of relatives, and we would then put microphones attached to smartphones on a couple of speakers or, th or three speakers or something like that, and that would help grandpa sort of stay in tune with what is being talked about at the table if he chooses to look at the phone or a large print on an iPad, whatever. So you do have to use a microphone, otherwise you're not gonna get the accuracy, but with microphones being pretty inexpensive and most everybody having a smartphone, being able to use this captioning device in lots of different life situations is now very easy. And very affordable. Uh, again, I, I think you spent what, 10 bucks on your microphone or something like that? Exactly. Yeah. 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 So you don't need to go out and spend, you know, $500 on some wireless microphone. Um, if you're purchasing like Phonak systems for a student, you're used to spending big dollars um, on that Phonak system. Uh, but for a family holiday gathering, $10. Um, and then if you need a, uh, uh, device in order for grandpa or grandma or whoever it is to uh, view the captioning, go with an Amazon Fire, $29. So again, not very much in terms of expense that we're talking about here to have a really nice setup. Um, and so lots of things that you can do. This is what it looks like in a uh, typical classroom setup. And the reason I include this picture is 
because the student just blends in with every other student. And for a lot of students, that can be a big deal. They don't want to look different than their peers. They want to blend in with everyone else. And so with the streamer, um, in this particular case, that student is using, I think it's a Microsoft Surface Pro, which is a great system. Uh, pricey, but certainly it's a great system. Um, but the student just blends in with every other uh, student in that classroom that's also using a Surface Pro. So if in your situation, your students are using Chromebooks or iPads or whatever it might be, um, go ahead and use that and that student is just gonna blend in with everybody else. And again, for some individuals, particularly in middle school, um, that can be a big difference in terms of getting them comfortable with using an accommodation. Um, during the school day. So the student is going to carry that tablet, uh, whatever it might be, um, and a, typically a wireless mic to the room. If they already have an existing wireless FM system, for example, a, a phone act system, you're gonna use that existing system. Um, you don't need to carry two microphones with you. The student is actually just gonna click on a desktop shortcut. So they don't need to open up a browser and go to the website. They can create a desktop shortcut and they'll just double click on that and it's gonna place them directly in their streamer room. They'll see the captioning, the live captioning, they'll add notes wherever desired. At the end of the class period, they're going to save the transcript if you allow them that uh, permission to do so and then clear the transcript and go to the next class. So pretty simple kind of stuff. And certainly this is a system from our perspective that's available 24 hours a day, every day, 24 hours a day. So we're more than happy for the student to use this system uh, after the school day at home or perhaps if they have a, a job or they're um, with the basketball coach, um, any place, any time um, that they wanna use the system, they're welcome to use it because again, it's your website. So there's no limits in terms of how many people you share your website with or how many minutes they use your website. It's your website and you control all the access and all of the above. Um, in a typical uh, ELL classroom setup, a little bit different here just in terms of thought in that uh, you have one streamer room that's gonna support all the students. So you do not need a separate streamer room for each student, um, just one room. And every student is going to have their own user account when they log in. User accounts are completely free. You can create as many as you want. Um, and that gives each student access to your website. The student, when they create their user account is going to specify their preferred language. So perhaps that student would prefer to see and hear the instructions in Russian. And when they set up the account, they will set that parameter. And now anything that you say is going to be presented to that student in their desired language. So in this case, Russian. Um, and again, whatever they say back is gonna be simultaneously translated into every other student's language. Uh, one thing that is obvious to everyone else, but wasn't obvious to me when we first started deploying this system, uh, was the huge secondary benefit that comes from this particular type of setup. And, and that was that if you have a student who is the only student in the school that speaks that particular language, so something like Somali or Cambodian or something like this, um, they're so isolated in that school that they kind of dread going to school. It's just they, they can't understand the teacher. They can't talk to the other students. And when we started deploying this into ELL classrooms, all of a sudden that student that was isolated now can speak to everyone else in the classroom. And that was huge. Um, it, it's something I just didn't anticipate. I just hadn't thought it through, I guess. But now that student has the ability to communicate with friends. Um, now they have friends at school. And so going to school instead of being, ah, I really don't want to do this, became an exciting thing for them because they could go and talk with their friends. Even though they didn't share a common language, uh, that student was able to communicate with somebody. So that was pretty cool. Um, actually, very cool. Um, and that was something that as we were doing this, we were so focused on the captioning and translation side and uh, from an accommodation standpoint, we really didn't think of the friendship uh, side of it. And so that was a really nice uh, extra benefit that comes from this. Uh, certainly you can use streamer outside of the classroom. So I've talked a little bit about that, but all school assemblies, morning announcements, in particular morning announcements can be a big thing in particular situations. Um, if you have a homebound student or somebody who's in a hospital, whatever it might be, certainly you can use this system 
uh, to support that student. So they do not need to be in the classroom to view the caption, just like you're not in my office right now, uh, and you're able to view that. Um, flipped classrooms, kind of more happening in uh, um, colleges and universities than it is in K-12, uh, but certainly if you're in that situation where you need to caption a video um, that students are going to view at home uh, to get the instructions, you can use this to uh, caption uh, those videos. And one that's becoming bigger now is translation of uh, parent-teacher meetings. Uh, because there's just so many languages that are being spoken that you need to support. And so certainly we can do that. Going to microphones here, I'm going to go over this kind of quick here because we're running out of time. Uh, but certainly if you already have an existing uh, phone act system or Oticon or something like that, go ahead and use that existing system. We do strongly recommend that you uh, spend the $5 on purchasing our cable. And this is a short cable that will come out of the receiver for your existing wireless FM system and plug into the computer. There are lots of adapters on Amazon that are really bad quality. And they tend to be rigid plastic and they break and it just is frustrating. So what we did is we went out and made a custom cable um, ordered 10,000 of them, kind of the minimum quantity, uh, but they're only $5 and it just makes life simpler. So we're not making money off these cables, um, but certainly if you're going to use an existing wireless system, getting that cable is certainly uh, recommended. Um, if you need to purchase a complete bundled system, I know sometimes um, grants and stuff, uh, you need to re uh, purchase everything. We do offer very high quality microphone systems. So the nano system is an extremely small receiver. It's the USB thumb drive. So very easy for a student to put it in their pocket and carry it to classes. Um, and with that, you get your choice of two um, uh, microphones, uh, lapel headset or handheld. Typically, uh, for educators, they tend to pick two lapel mics, one that the student is going to use and the other one is a spare. Um, the dual um, allows two microphones to be connected to the receiver and it's $100 more. But again, you don't need to spend the big dollars to buy our high quality microphone systems. We're certainly happy to sell them to you, um, but we don't push you those at all. Um, Definitely you can uh, go online, uh, purchase one. As Karen mentioned earlier, if you're gonna use a cabled microphone for your family gathering, uh, a budget of $10 is gonna get you everything that you need. Um, do mention just this real quick, uh, the dual microphone also includes this bracket that allows you to attach the uh, receiver to the back of a smartphone. And it's actually pretty neat because uh, now if you're in a shopping mall or something like this, you can have that bracket uh, attached to uh, uh, your smartphone and just hand a wireless microphone to the clerk uh, or whoever you're speaking with in, in that shopping mall. And whatever they say is going to be captioned and displayed on your system. So the, the person at the... Uh, checkout counter or whatever, does not need to log into Streamer or something like that. They just speak into that wireless microphone. So it's kind of a nice feature of the dual system. Pricing per room. Um, certainly get into the uh, pricing here. So the cost of Streamer, um, when you purchase it, ends up being there $32.50 a month, and that's if you purchase it on an annual plan. So if you do the math, multiply that times 12, that comes out to $390 per year. So again, $32.50 per month. If you would like to purchase it just on a monthly basis, the cost is $39 per month. But again, when you purchase a full 12 months, that's gonna drop to $32.50. And uh, going back to a point we emphasized earlier, that trial that you're signing up is completely free and we are not going to automatically charge you at the end of the month. And so uh, you don't have to worry about that. Completely free, use it for the holidays and you don't have to cancel or anything like that. The account will just disappear at the end of 30 days. Um, every time that you uh, sign up, you do get unlimited use and unlimited number of user accounts. So you can use this as often as you want. There are no restrictions, you know, like uh, five hours per month or something ridiculous like that. You can use this as often as you want. So you don't have to 
worry about burning through minutes or something like that. Um, you do get an admin account with each subscription that you are going to use to manage all the access and usage permissions. Again, you alone control all that. We have no access to your data. Uh, the only thing that we can see on your data is all encrypted, so it's just pure gibberish. Um, just a bunch of random characters on the screen. It's 64-bit encryption, um, which is huge. Uh, there's no way somebody's going to hack that. Um, the additional language features. Um, uh, so I really sh probably shouldn't have shown this uh, pricing here um, because if you purchase it through Karen's website, you're going to get those language translation features included. So there's absolutely no reason that you would pay extra for the language translation features because you're going to go to Karen's website and we'll show you that here in a minute and uh, just purchase the basic one and um, you know, in agreement with Karen, all the uh, language translations are automatically included with that. So please do not pay extra uh, because you don't need to. Uh, they're included. Um, if you buy five or more rooms, you get a 20% discount, 10 or more, 25. The more rooms that you purchase, uh, the larger the discount, and they get pretty significant. I'm going kind of fast here, but definitely if you're hosting a conference, um, you are required by law to provide uh, live captioning. We're happy to do that for you for free. Just contact us. We're going to set up a separate captioning room for each of your sessions. Uh, we're going to give that to you completely free, um, but you do need to give us advanced warning. So don't wait till the morning of to do that. Um, but just uh, contact us, uh, ideally like a week early, and we're happy to set that up for you and we'll get everything working for you um, and be able to caption that conference. Um, again, we're going to send you these slides, so I'm going through quite quick because I'm watching the clock here. Um, but there are a, a series of probably about 10 very short uh, video tutorials that are just awesome. So how to create a desktop shortcut. So the student, instead of having to open up a browser and log into Streamer and use their account and stuff, all they're going to do is double click on that shortcut and it's place them directly in the room. It's a really nice little feature. All these videos are about a minute long. So very to the point, very concise, and they're a great way uh, to uh, learn about uh, the system. In particular, one that's uh, really liked by people is how to integrate an existing wireless FM system into Streamer. And so uh, definitely we encourage you to do that. And uh, again, we're going to send you all this uh, slide so you'll be able to see that. Um, some contact information, kind of hard to read here, um, but uh, Mike is an excellent, excellent, excellent uh, resource in terms of deploying Streamer into classrooms. Uh, here at Auditory Sciences, we deploy Streamer all over the place. So into businesses, into church services, um, webinars, seminars. Um, Mike is specifically focused on K-12 classroom situations. And so he is definitely an expert in doing that. So we strongly encourage you to work with Mike in terms of any questions that you might have in terms of deploying. He really, he really is terrific. And Mike is the one that developed all the videos that Rob talked about in the last slide. So you'll be able to see him if you click on any of those short videos. Mike is also the one that's going to be sending you the follow-up email for everybody who has attended and registered. And so you will already have his email address if you think of questions questions that are specific that you want to ask, just reply to that email. You'll already have it there if you don't want to jot this down now. I am very happy as a thank you to send anyone who is uh, listening to this webinar right now a CEU certificate. All you have to do is drop me an email at karen at successforkidswhl.com. You can see it there. You don't even have to write much. Just write certificate on the top, send it off to me, and I will send it off to you or send it back to you by the end of the week. I need to have all of those requests, however, by noon tomorrow. <laughs> so um, if you can get your requests in, just take care of it now in the next few minutes, and we'll make sure you get your full 60-minute uh, CEU certificate because it's been a full hour. Um, we haven't been able to show you the website, but please. I can bring it over oh, real oh, quick, oh, quick, but quick, yeah. Quick. yeah. Yep. So you can see if you would go to products at the top, you would see products. And that's where you find Streamer. And um, you can see it here on the, yep, on the right. And you would click on there. Most people are interested in the purchasing the streamer part. If you want to just hover over the, the choices. Um, 
for candidacy for students, we are developing a, a new um, short uh, functional method to be able to do uh, ch check the benefit, you know, pretest for before captioning, post test for um, after you've had captioning and used for uh, three weeks or so. Um, but the most things people want to look are the purchasing page and it's all laid out there. It's pretty simple. You can buy it by the month. You can buy it by the year. You can buy it in quantity and you can buy the cables. And that's pretty much it. And we do take purchase orders or credit cards online. All right. Um, let's see. Yeah, we're kind of out of time here. Uh, we did a quick view of that uh, website, so certainly encourage you to do that. Um, I will stick around and answer some of the questions that people have. Um, just uh, one reminder that certainly you are encouraged to uh, sign up for your own uh, personal website. It's completely free. Go ahead and do that, and uh, we'll send you a copy of the slides. And Karen, why don't you go ahead and close us out then? Yeah, well, happy holidays, everybody. Hopefully, you can uh, give Streamer a try with your uh, your relatives around the table or wherever, and maybe Grandma is going to have a better Christmas than she's had for a few years. And we appreciate your time, and we're excited about the possibility of Streamer as an accommodation for students or who are hard of hearing or others in school. There's lots of applications when you think about it. So again, have a great end of 2019. Happy holidays, everybody. And we'll be here to answer your questions at any time. Go to the website. Thanks again. Bye-bye.